This morning, we will be learning the Word of God taken from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. Ito na ka mo yung mga Biblia. Pakibukas na lang po. Lucas chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. And I'll be reading it in English and can you follow me silently as I read. Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. The Word of God says, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in a luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. And the rich man also died and was buried in hell. Where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. And so he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the, dip the tip of his finger in water and call my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you have received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comported here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chance must be fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from here to us. And he answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. And Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets to let them listen to. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And he said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Kanimo, Diyos, ni intak na sa kabuntagon. Salamat kino. Ninglayan sa pagkakaroon kami nagkatigom para simbahon ka. Lord, pagpalain mo po ang bawat isa na narito ngayong umaga. Salamat Panginoon sa kanilang mga puso na kusang loob na silang bumalik at naparito para mapakinggan ang iyong mga salita ngayong umaga. Bless us, O Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Now, the passage that we have read this morning will be given a topic on the truth and reality about hell. Ang katotohanan at ang katunayan ng impyerno. Now, from the passage that we have read this morning, we have known that right after death, there will be judgment. Pagkatapos atong kinabuhi sa kalibutan na ay hukom. And the Bible says, Hebrews 9.27, Man is destined to die once, and after that, there will be judgment. And because of that, as a result of that judgment, uh, the soul of the beggar, represented by Lazarus, uh, after he died, uh, his soul had been escorted by the angel, going to Abraham's bosom, or in short, he went to hell. And you know what nangyari. And also, the rich man died. Uh, and after that death, when he woke up, he was already suffering in hell. Now, this morning, we will focus our study on the soul of the rich man, which is suffering in hell. Isisinto natin yung ating pag-aaral ngayong umaga, yung kaluluwa ng mayaman na paggising niya, naghirap na siya sa impyerno. Now, there was a survey authorized by the United States News and World Report. It reveals that 64% of the American people believe in hell. Nito sila nga na impyerno. But the problem is that they have many concepts of what hell is all about. Nito sila ka impyerno, pero nasa lay kanya-kanyang paniniwala ano ba talaga ang impyerno. May kanya-kanya. And they also believe that uh, kung saan iyan na nalagay. Na, naniwala sila na ito ang kanyang paniwala at kung saan ito nalalagay. And I have heard a pastor who preached a subject about hell and he said that hell is located at the center of the earth. Do you believe in that? <laughs> I do not know. Huh? I, I have not read that in the Bible. And so, it's a question mark. And so, this morning, I will be sharing with you some ideas about hell taught by many churches of the world. 
Uh, what is hell all about? As believed by other people. And I will also be telling you this morning, what hell is all about based on the passage that we have here this morning. Now, some believe uh, that heaven and hell are the state of the mind. Kumbaga na sa isip lang. Uh, state of the mind, it is not a place. Uh, that's what the belief of other people. And people will experience heaven now and people will experience hell now based on what their mind conceive. You so, Kaya makikita natin, people experience their own hell now and some also experience heaven now. Kaya may nagsasabi, maraming nagsabi, uh, na kung mayaman ka, if you are rich, if you are comfortable, you are healthy, you have everything, you are already experiencing heaven. Is it right? I don't think so. And some said, if you are poor, you are suffering, and you are not healthy, or maybe you have COVID, most likely you are already in hell. Is it true? Of course not. Is it? Now, some say also that hell, huh, they believe that it is only a story fabricated by some church people so that they will be happy, they will have a hope of going to heaven or they will be afraid of going to hell. So it is a fabricated story. Yun ang sabi. But if we ask Google about it, uh, if we ask Google, and I do not know if Google is right or wrong, <laughs> he said, how many times did Jesus Christ use the word hell in the New Testament? And Google said, uh, Jesus Christ used the word hell 56 times in the New Testament. And if you ask again, how many times did Jesus Christ use the word heaven in New Testament? The Google also will answer, 24 times. And so, if we believe Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He is our God, Jesus Christ is the truth, yeah, then heaven and hell are real. Do you believe that heaven and hell is real? Totoo ba talaga yan? Ah, yun ang ating pag-aaral ngayong umaga. And Jesus also, some also believe that hell is an annihilation. What is an annihilation? Meaning, it is the final destructions of all evil persons. Uh, tatapusin na talaga uh, yung mga taong masasama sa pamagitan ng pagsusunog ng apoy. Now, the soul will be burned and after that, no more. That is an annihilation. Kung baga, magsusunog ka ng papel, if you burn a piece of paper, after it is burned, no more. It is no more. But that is not what the Bible said. And the Bible supports that hell is a real place. It is a place of torment. It is a place of suffering. Kaya, based on the foregoing information that I have learned, I have said this morning, the message that I'll be sharing to this morning is entitled, Hell is Real. Don't make a joke about it. Ang imperno ay totoo, wag kang magbiro kung pag-usapan na ang imperno. You see? Hell is real, so don't make a joke about it. Now, background of the passage, the story told by Jesus in Luke 16, batay sa binasa natin, Luke 16, 19 to 31, it talks about lives, it talks about deaths, it talks about destinies of two people. The destiny of Lazarus and the rich man. Now, after their deaths, pagkatapos ng kanyang kamatayan, both of them experience an unusual reversal of their life status quo in the world. Now, when the rich man died, uh, when he woke up, he experienced that he was only suffering in hell. When Lazarus died, uh, his soul has been taken by an angel going to Abraham's bosom, or in short, his soul was brought to hell. Now, Makikita natin, ganun ang nangyayari. The poor man also died and he was carried by the an angel to Abraham's bosom. In short, uh, he was brought to hell. Now, although the passage that we have read this morning does not talk in detail about the life of Lazarus. Hindi pinag-usapan kung ano si Lazarus, anong ginagawa niya noon, nagsisimba ba siya. Walang sinasabi. Walang sinasabi sa Biblia. Pero if we look at the name of Lazarus, in Hebrew, Lazarus means Eliezer. And the word Eliezer means help by God. Meaning, Eliezer, tinulungan ng Panginoon, gitabangan sa ginoo. Now, usually, if we read in the Bible, what are the kinds of people that are usually helped by God? Kung sa mga klaseng mga tao, katalasan sa Biblia, ang gitabangan sa ginoo. 
Normally, what are kind, what kind of people? The righteous, the good, uh, the believer, and many others. Tinutulungan ng Panginoon. Uh, yun. Now, if you look at the life, the name of Lazarus Eliezer helped by God, most probably, he was a good man. Lazarus, a good man, because helped by God. And maybe, uh, Lazarus, I mean, helped by God, Lazarus was a friend of God. Kadalasan, kung higala ka sa gino, expect that God will help us. Are you a friend of God? Uh, yeah, very good. Is it? Matalino talaga kayo. Is it? Good. Ganyan kayo kinakailangan. We need to be a friend of God. Now, the rich man also died. I see. And after a moment, he woke up. His soul was suffering in hell. Paggising niya, nakita niya sa Lazarus doon sa kamay ni Abraham at siya naghihirap. Ah, ito makikita natin. Naghihirap na siya. And because of that, ah, because of the story told by Jesus, it gives us ah, an insight what hell is all about. Dahil sa kwento ni Panginoong Kristo, batay sa Luke 16, 19-31, para makikita natin na ito ang larawan ng imperno. Naghihirap si mayaman, masaya doon si Lazarus. Now, it provides us a powerful and convincing information enough to destroy what people believe now. Kung naniniwala ka na ang imperno ay nasa isip lang, ay hindi ho yun. The rich man, hindi siya nag-isip, nag-isip, naghihirap talaga siya. Kaya tumawag sa kay Abraham, Father Abraham, send Lazarus in my place and bring, let his finger have a water to be dropped in my tongue because I am suffering in hell. Meaning, mahirap talaga. And this morning, I want to share with you three important things uh, about hell. What hell is all about. First, hell is a place of misery and pain. Ang impyerno, usa ka ni kalugar nga paghihirap mm, o kasakitan. Na grabe ang problema. Kasi ang impyerno ay isang lugar ng paghihirap at walang hangganang pagdurusa. Mm, impyerno. Now, the Bible says, the rich man is being tormented in hell. Ang mayaman naghihirap doon, pinahirapan sa impyerno. Huh? And he said, even just a little amount of water, bring it to me, drop it on my tongue, so that I could feel... Uh, mawala-wala ho yung kahirapan. And he said, I am tormented in this flame. Uh, sabi niya, naghirap ako at sa nagliyab na mainit na apoy. Now, pero walang sagot, walang tubig na dumating kay mayaman. Wala. Hindi niya pinadala si Lazarus na dala ng tubig. Wala. Kaya makikita natin, since no relief can be available in this miserable place, he big Abraham, nakiusap siya kay Abraham, Abraham, kung wala man lang tulong na makarating sa akin, sabi ng mayaman, ipadala mo si Lazarus sa bahay ng tatay. Send Lazarus to my father's house because I have still five brothers there. Kung diliban ka makatabang para mawala ang problema sa imperno, ipadala si Lazarus dito sa palay sa akong tatay. Kaya napakoy lima kaigsoon dito. Ha? Ah. Napakoy lima kaigsoon dito so that they will not come in the place where I am now ipadala si Lazaro, kumbinsiya sila itong akong iksoon dito para dili sila makaabot diri kay lisod kayo, payet kayo ka ng impyerno. Munang sulti sa mayaman. Now, there are many people of the world today who do not believe in the fire of hell. Dili sila mo to, hindi sila naniniwala nga ang impyerno merong apoy. Ano ang kanilang paniniwala? They believe that the fire in hell is only a symbol. He said, he said, it's only a symbol or a representation of something real and great. Ha? Ah, malinaw ba? Na ang kalayo daw sa impyerno, simbolo lang. Ha? Ah, simbolo lang. Simbolo of something na tinuod o great kayo. Ha? Ah, great. Now, if the symbol of hell is fire, just the fire of hell, uh, the fire that symbolizes hell, do you believe that what it symbolizes is a block of ice in hell? If this is fire, it symbolizes hell, 
Does it symbolize a block of ice in hell? Of course not. Because an ice and a fire are two different things. You see? Does the fire symbolize something, an ice cream in hell? Of course not. Does the fire symbolize something, air conditioned room in hell? Of course not. It must be something that is real. Now, if fire is hot, then hell is more than hot. If fire is not easy, then hell is not comfortable. Huh? Yeah, it is true. Di kanon tala. Kung ang apoy na pinabanggit ng Biblia, intindihin natin na simbolo, kung ang apoy ay simbolo, hindi malamig ang simbolo ng init. Hindi. Kung mainit, mainit. Kung malamig, malamig. Di ba? Ganon. Malinaw. Kaya makikita natin, kaya ang tunay na impyerno, the real hell, uh, ay higit pang napakahirap at nakakasindak. At ito hindi talaga para sa tao. Kaya sinabi ng Biblia sa Matthew 5.41 pag 5.41, Hell is intended and prepared by God for Satan and his cohorts, his demons. You see, diandam ang impyerno, dili para sa tao, kundi para sa kay Satanas o ang mga demonyo. Kaya makikita natin sa Matthew 5.41. Kaya, the most painful thought of anyone who is in hell in their mind is that no one could ever help them, not even God. Maybe you said, oh, baka sinabi mo, Pastor, ah, kahit ang Diyos ay hindi na makatulong sa mga tao sa imperno. Di ba sinabi ng Biblia, nothing is impossible with God. Huh? <laughs> Are you thinking? <laughs> yeah? Why? Bakit sinabi ko na, Yes, the people or someone in hell are suffering. No one could ever help them, not even God. Why? Because once you are in hell, once someone is in hell, the Bible says, ah, God will pour out His wrath forever and ever. Ibubos ng Diyos ang lahat ng kanyang put, ng puso at damdamin para sa mga kaluluwa na nandoon na sa impyerno. And God, in some agent passage of the Bible, God will withdraw His grace, His mercy to anyone who is in hell. Wala na buot, wala nang puwang ng pag-ibig ng Diyos sa puso ng mga tao nang doon sa impyerno. God will withdraw. Ganun yung sinasabi ng Biblia. Kaya, unang-una, what hell is all about? Hell is a place of misery and pain. Mahirap, walang kairapan na mapwedeng ikumpara. Pangalawa, hell is a place of remembrance and regret. Hell is a place of remembrance and regret. Uh, aside from the fact that hell is a place of misery and pain, it is a place of remembrance and regret. Why? Why? Ang lahat ng mga alaala, all our memories in hell are alive. You see, if you neglect the advice of your wife about hell, if you neglect, do not listen, do not know what the advice of your husband about hell. If you neglect the advice of your parents about hell. If you are not listening to any of the sermons of the pastor every Sunday about hell and you do not listen because you do not believe, then you will remember that and that memory is real. Yeah, and that memory is real. Not only memory, you will experience the pain once you are there. Kaya makita na, he remembers everything, he remembers everyone who warned him about the judgment in hell. Kaya, buhay na buhay, and you will be experiencing as a living being there. Buhay ka na buhay, na mararamdaman mo talaga yung init, ang paghihirap, kaya napakasakit. Why? That memory will always torment you, will always accuse you. Why you did not listen to the sermon? Why you did not believe your parents? Why? And that will never end. Susumbatan ka ng kanya-kanya nating mga budhi at yun ang napakasakit dahil wala na tayong magawa, hindi na tayong makatulong sa ating mga kamag-anak sa mundo at higit sa lahat, wala nang kahit sino mang makakatulong sa atin. That punishment is eternal. Paghihirap na walang katapusan. Kaya makikita natin, ang pinakamakasakit, pinakamasakit yan, uh, maalaala mo lahat. You will remember everything what has been warning you, ginibigay sa iyo, but you did not listen, you did not take action about it. Therefore, you are suffering. Kung ibig sabihin, pagsisisi, 
na walang hanggan. Bakit hindi ko sinunod? Napakadali lang palang maligtas. It's very easy to be saved. It is very easy to go to heaven. But why I did not do it? That's the thing. Papahirapan ka ng konsensya mo at yun ay walang hanggang katapusan. Kaya hell, number one, hell is a place of misery and pain. Second, it is a place of remembrance and regret. Walang katapusan pagsisisi. Bakit? 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 Isang oras lang hindi ako makapunta sa simbahan pero makakapunta ako sa mga lugar na taglimang oras. Makagamit ako ng five hours sa Facebook ko. Bakit hindi ako makapagdasal ng one minute? No more chance. Uh, uno, wala nang pag-asa hanggang pagsisisi na lang. Sana maibalik ko ang kahapon. Pero wala na. Gone is by gone. Third, hell is not only a place of misery and pain. It is not only a place of remembrance and regret. Hell is a place of hardships. Or it's a place of suffering. Paghihirap. Sorrow and grief. Sorrow, meaning uh, lugar na puno ng kalungkutan at pagluluksa. Kasi sinabi ng Biblia Batay sa binasa natin, verse 27 to 31, uh, para itong buhay na conversation between Abraham and the rich man. Itong sinabi ng rich man said, I beg you therefore, Father, send Lazarus into my father's house. I have five brothers there, just like me. Wala sinabi yung just like me. Pero, why he went to hell? Because he does not do anything. Hmm. Sabi, just like me, adarit yung pal- limang kapatid ko. Mandurugas yung limang kapatid ko. Hindi nagsisimba, hindi nagpapasa ng Biblia. Ah, marami pa, for if you are one of those things, you are a candidate of hell. Be careful about that. Hmm. Pag wala kang pakialam sa kapatao mo, the poor mga bigars have been picking up is scavenging all those leftovers of the rich man in his pasuraan. And yet, he does not even care to give a piece of bread to him. Kahit bibigyan mo man siya ng isang sakong bigas, hindi siya maging dukha. Kahit bibigyan mo siya ng isang $1,000, hindi siya maging dukha. But he failed to do that and he remembers everything while he was suffering in hell. But the problem is, he only remembers and he cannot do anything and nobody could help him. Not even God, because the mercy of God has been withdrawn to anyone who is in hell. So, what we are doing the anyone in hell, regret, regret, sana, 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 sana may bukas pa. You see? Now, hmm, sabi niya, send Lazarus to my father's house and convince them that hell is real. But what Moses answered? Moses answered, Abraham answered, you have Moses there and the prophets. Nandoon pa ang si Moses nandoon. Nandoon pa ang mga propita nagsisermon. Nandoon pa si Pastor Lasay palagi linggo-linggo nagsisermon. Pero kung hindi ka papasok sa simbahan, pag hindi ka makikinig sa live, wala ka pa rin magagawa. Ha? Pag hindi sila maniniwala kay Moses at kay sa mga propita, ha? wala silang magagawa. Ha? Pero sabi ni ng mayaman, Father Abraham, Ha? if someone rises from the dead and will talk to my brothers they will believe pag naipatay mo buhi pag-usap musulti sila mo convince ka nila mutuo sila kay nabuhi man siya pag-usap ano bang sagot ni Abraham ha? if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets even if someone rises from the dead they will not be persuaded to believe what hell is all about what heaven is all about you know, ang katotohanan, kahit someone man mabuhay. Ano ba? Sino ba ang naging kausap ni Abraham sa panahong ito nang sabihin niya sa mayaman? Abraham was not only talking to the rich man. He's talking to all of us now. Even if someone would rise from the dead, they would not even be persuaded to believe. Right now, there are many people throughout the world who do not believe about Jesus Christ. There are many people throughout the world do not believe about heaven and hell. Jesus Christ has spoken everything. He died and He rose again from the dead. And after that, He convinced everyone. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Yet, even to the moment, many people do not believe in heaven or hell. So, when we suffer in hell, all we can do is regret. Regret, regret. Na lang ang magawa natin. Tapos na. You see? 
the rich man also uh, the rich man the place of hell is full of sorrow and grief the rich man is not experiencing fellowship in hell maraming mga tao naghirap doon pat walang fellowship ano bang ibig sabihin ng fellowship huh? walang pagkakaisa huh? wala everyone is complaining why, why, why they do not care about anyone suffering there but you have the mind you remember your brothers your parents in the world but wala na tayong magagawa once we are in hell or anyone who is in hell uh, you become you will have a mind of a missionary but it's too late wala nang pagkakataon na marinig pa yung gusto mong maparinig ng ibang tao yeah it is the place ah walang sinabi hindi nagsabi yung mayaman ah it's okay for me here anyway my brothers will be coming over when they will come we will enjoy together we will be drinking or we will have six here no wala Father Abraham talk let Lazarus talk to them and convince them that hell is real but it's too late ah, wala na there is no more transferring from one place to another because that place is demarcated my boundary and hindi ho pwedeng ah, hindi pwedeng pass it over no kaya hell is a place of sorrow and grief and someone has to warn everyone kinakailangan bilang kristyano pag naniniwala tayo kay Christ if we believe Jesus Christ someone we have to warn anyone who does not know what hell is all about as much as we can we have no power to convince them it's God who can convince them you see to summarize what can we learn from the afterlife ano bang matutunan natin pagkatapos ng ating buhay dito sa mundo what shall we learn after we die ha huh? first the dead are still alive in heaven and in hell ang mga patay ay buhay sa langit man o kay sa imperno man kaya makikita natin their memory is alive yeah they feel maramdaman nila mamamakim lahat kaya do not believe uh, that the planet earth that you are living now is a planet of the land of the living the planet earth that you are living now is the land of the dying every day there are many people dying throughout the world millions of people are dying every day every hour every minute and every second many people are dying throughout the world yeah even you brush your teeth many cells mamamatay when you brush your teeth so hard many parts of your gums will be removed and that will be considered dead already if you cut your fingernails you are killing many parts of your body still yeah if you are drinking too much wine every day you are killing many parts of your body still if you are not sleeping eight hours a day you are killing many parts of your body still if you are not sleeping eight hours a day you are killing many parts of your body still meaning every day we are dying this world is the land of the dying you see but after this life we will continue to live forever you are in heaven or in hell second the dead retain their personalities and essential character ano bang ibig sabihin yan retain ano bang retain ah, ang mga patay manatili tayo yung kanilang mga character essential character nandiyan pa rin nandiyan pa meaning in hell the rich man could see nakakakita siya nakita niya si Lazarus nakita niya and he could hear he could hear he could feel the fire he could remember he could recognize he could speak he could reflect and he could ask favor Father Abraham send Lazarus into my father's house I have five brothers still there but no more time wala na and we could think ahead at us send my send Lazarus to my brother's my father's house huh? once we die if you are not concerned about mission work on earth when you die and you are in hell you think about mission 
How I wish I could share the gospel to my wife and to my husband and to my children. But it's too late. Wala na ipanahon. Tapos na ang maligayang araw mo. Kaya wala nang magawa. There is only one thing that we could not do in hell. To save ourselves and to save others. You see? Well, hindi na natin magawa. Hindi na natin magawa. And nobody could ever help us, not even God, because God withdraws His mercy to all people who are in hell. Wala na ipag nabilin nga gugma sa ginose ang kasing-kasing sa talang tao dito sa impyerno. Third, death will mark the separation, the final separation between the saved and the lost. Mahiwalay na ang puti at ang di color. <laughs> There will be a separation of the saved and the lost. Ah, mahiwalay na ang mga ligtas at mahiwalay na yung hindi ligtas. Once in hell, you will be in hell forever. And once you are in heaven, you will be in heaven forever. No one, there is no crossover. Wala na hong lipatan. Manatili ang kanya hanggang ngayon. And the truth is that God loves us all. Mahal na mahal tayo ng Panginoon kaya puso niyang ipadala ang kanyang nag-isang manap para sa atin, para maligtas. He sent His Son because of His love. Yes, He loves us. He loves us. But He respect our decision. Ah, he loves us. He loves us and He respect our decision. And open times we hear people, I don't believe in you, Pastor. God is a loving God. And God will not allow His loving creature to be, to be suffering in hell. Hindi ako maniniwala sa iyo, Pastor, kasi ang Diyos ay mapagmahal. Uh, ayaw niya na ang kanyang minamahal ay mapasa impyerno. Yes, He loves us so much. And because of that love, He respect our decision. You see? He respect our decision. Meaning, uh, going to heaven is not a, a reward for doing good. Going to hell is not a punishment of doing something bad. But, Going to heaven and going to hell is a result of our choice now. Resulta sa ating pagpipili. Kung gusto tayo matuglangit, makaato taglangit. Gusto ba mong matuglangit? Makaato mo. Kung gusto. If you want to go to hell, you can. God will not interfere your decision. You see, because of that love. You see, if you chose going to heaven, you will be in heaven. And if you choose going to hell, you will be in hell. In either way, God respect our decision. Ino honor niya. So, kung ano man ang maging hantungan natin sa bandang huli ng buhay natin, ah, be ready to bear the consequences. Dapat handa kayong magtatanggap kung ano man ang maging hantungan ng decision natin sa ating pagpipili ngayon. He said, remember that hell is a place of misery and pain. It's a place of remembrance and regret. It's a place of sorrow and grief. And now is the time to choose. Ngayon na ang araw sa pagpipili. Gusto ba nating mapunta ng langit? Ayaw ba nating mapunta ng impirno? Ngayon na ang araw sa pagpipili. Second Corinthians 6 to says, in, my, in the time of my favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I help you. Now is the day of my people. Now is the day of my salvation. Do not wait for tomorrow, for tomorrow may never come. And before I end this message, allow me to share with you a simple illustration. There was a man, he was dreaming. He dreamed that he died. Na naginip siya na siya namatay. And so when he dreamed, when he woke up, he was already in hell. And he found people there all. They were sitting in the many tables in hell. This is a dream. They were sitting in a table. And on the table, there are many food. Napakasarap na pagkain. Each one was sitting. And the angel said, Okay, let's begin to eat plenty of delicious food. And so the angel, each one, give them, the angel give each one, one spoon. The spoon has an arm of two meters long. And that spoon was attached to their hand. And they were attached to their chair. And so the food was there on the table. They were sitting on the chair. And the food was there on the front of them. And so, okay, begin. Now when they begin to eat, use the spoon, 
they cannot feed themselves because the hands of the spoon is long. So every food had been scattered all over the place. And so the people there were malnourished. They were so thin and dying. But they were alive. They could not eat even there plenty of food there. And so, wow, could I eat? I want to eat. I'm so hungry. But they could not eat because the spoon cannot reach the mouth. It's over there. The spoon is very long. And so when he woke up, oh, I'm hungry. And he woke up. And again he sleep again. He sleep again. And again he dream again. The same scenario. There were long tables and many people were sitting. And also they have a long spoons attached to their hands. But when he saw the people, the people are healthy. And strong. And some were overweight. Why? How do you, how do you use the long spoon? How could they eat the long spoon? What? Two meters long. When I put the food, I feed my brother innocent. I feed everyone. And everyone is feeding one another. Because in heaven, there is love. There is fellowship. And there is unity. And if you are in hell, you miss all those things. And you will suffer of remembering and you will be regretting every day of your life throughout not in eternity be careful hell is real don't make a joke about it kanimo Diyos in takna sa kabuntagon thank you Lord for your word thank you for reminding us in our life now life is indeed a journey and in this journey, God bestows us two roads to follow. One road going to hell and one road going to heaven. And we have the right to choose. God respect our choice, whatever road to follow. But be careful. Be careful with your choice. Do not choose hell because hell is a place of misery and pain. Hell is a place of remembrance and regrets. It's a place of sorrow and kairapan. Lord, give us always the right choice that in our life we're always to follow you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is the way to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. It's us in your holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Maraming salamat po. God bless you.